Welcome to episode four of the Zach and Kyle podcast. I'm Zach Halperin. He's Kyle Floyd. I'm Kyle Floyd, and this is our uh, <laughs> our first guest of the. This is our first real season. episode. Is it really? It's Alex Smith. Wow. In the house, Alex is our guest, and we have an interview with him coming up um, later in the show. Later in the show, I will introduce him. He is a junior in com, hails from Edina. Did I say that Edina. right? Edina. Edina, Minnesota. The co-sports director of WTB along with myself, he is the primary one, the women's basketball play-by-play man for the Patriot League Network, uh, does play-by-play for field hockey as well. Anything else? What do you Probably else do you softball. Do? Terrier Nation? Probably will do Whatever. some softball. I mean, he's, he's everywhere. He's, he's all over the place. I guess. So we what we want to do is bring in interesting people from Calm. Uh, some will be involved with WTB, some might not, but we want to bring in interesting people from Calm and ask them questions, and talk to them. So that's coming up soon. But before that, we have to get into our Super Bowl thoughts. Um, Kyle, did you, who'd you have winning? I don't even remember. I had the Panthers winning, and I wanted the Broncos to win. That's kind of like me. I had the Panthers winning, but I was perfectly happy with Denver winning. Uh, so initial Super Bowl thoughts, I thought it was a pretty terrible game. Like, I like defense and all that, but it was just, there's seven fumbles. There's like a lot of bad offense uh, yeah, it was a very boring games. game to watch. I love. I'm a big Super Bowl guy. I love the festivities of it. I watched the game intently, intensely, uh, as Alex was at our Super Bowl party. Hell you know, yeah, there's yeah. chatter going around, right? I'm like on the yeah, game. Yeah, no, dude, I was all chatter. Not gonna lie, you yeah. saw me. I, I it was wasn't all just chatter. you. There were there were a lot of people. No, it was chatting. Chat. Me and Noah, man, we're just we're chatty. Family. Oh yeah, your brother is there too. We're just blah, 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 but you know, I was I was very focused on the game, and it was a little, it was a little disappointing. Kyle, were you disappointed? I don't know if I was disappointed. Like after the Patriots lost uh, in the in the championship round, I was I was you know I really wanted to see if if it, if it was the defensive line of the Broncos, if it was the Broncos defense, um, was you know the biggest impact there, and absolutely was. It pretty they I think they pretty much proved that who regardless of who you have back there in center, they're going to shut you down. Yeah, I think in most years, I think it's a kind of an aberration in terms of most years you're going to need a good QB to win the Super Bowl. And Peyton Manning just wasn't no. a good QB this year. No, <laughs> but. It also shows that in special cases, when your defense is that dominant, you can kind of skate along and win all these games with a game manager type at QB. And as, as bad as people are saying Peyton played, he didn't make mistakes. He threw one pick. Interception. He did. But, like, he didn't he didn't do Not anything that really put them in bad positions. Whereas He didn't try to do too much. Yes, whereas Cam got strip-sacked on the one. Um, the fumble, which we'll talk about, that he didn't really go after. It's tough because, like, he's a guy that gives that, like, extra, that, like, extra little bit of energy to make a play. And, like, sometimes he that bites does. you. And it just, like, bit him so many times. Well, Cam usually does. But on the fumble recovery, it was 16-10 Denver. Carolina ball. Ball gets stripped. There's, like, I don't know how many minutes left there were. But you have a chance to drive down the field, even though you're deep in your own territory. And he doesn't, he doesn't go after the ball. No, he started. And then he, like, back now he's saying he, Now he's saying that he, like, it was because he didn't want to, like, injure his leg. Okay, yeah, I think not good excuse at this he point. said that. Let me, yeah, no, no, I know. Let me say this though. I thought this was a bad commentary moment. Let's because hear it. I thought when I was because this is what I'm always thinking about when I'm watching games. I'm thinking about like what the commentators are saying, how they're reacting. Bill Sims and to what's happening. Exactly. I hate this. So, case. so I mean, yeah, they're not exactly my favorite either. Also, like football commentary, not my favorite either. But that's beside the point. Um, they kind of threw him under the bus. I thought when I was watching the replay. What were they like, saying about it? I don't well, know. they were like, it looks like Newton backed out, and like. I thought that he backed out because, like, he saw the other guy was literally already on the ball. Well, like, he, I think his they, brain they, realized that it, it was a wasted game. effort. Like, I think his brain had that basic instinctive reaction that was like, don't dive because, like, you're not going to get it. Because I don't think he was going to get it. Yeah, but when I, watched the play, I thought the, the other guy easily had it. But even when you don't, even when you don't think you're going to get yeah. it, it's the Super Bowl. And I DeMarcus, mean, that's the argument. DeMarcus Ware, like, hit it with his arm and then someone else picked it up, but... It was going to be tough for him to get anyway. My I, point is, though, what if the commentators wouldn't have said that? Like, no, would, we, but, would anyone have even no, thought that? They, it's like, the it's way that the game, it made me realize yeah, the way the like game that. is presented influences your mind yeah. and your perception I also, so really much. Really and really the, the power that is held by those people. I was impressed by Cam's honesty, though. Today, he yeah, came out and yeah. said, yeah, first of all, he said, I'm a, I am a sore loser. And if you show me a good loser, and they're a loser, which we'll <laughs> get into. But he yeah. also said, I, I didn't go after it. I, I thought my leg was going to be contorted in a weird way, and I didn't. But let's talk about the post-game press conference, because that's what this intro is all about. Last night, or Sunday night, Kyle and I got into a Twitter war uh, about this. Kyle, I will give you the opening monologue, because you think you're going to win this argument. and um, I'm Should just I, gonna, like, arbitrate? I'm going to let him start. Is that a word? 
I think uh, so. The whole, oh, this is not so much an argument. It's just I wanted that to just admit a couple. You can look things, at me too. But, you know, but uh, I, oh, I will. Okay, so um, <laughs> so let's just first of all, I want to thank Cam Newton before I get into criticizing. Yeah, you're going to defend him. Yes. Uh, so let's I'm get into this winning. transcript. Uh, first question to Cam Newton: What was your message to the Panthers fans? We'll be back. Understandable question. Uh, next, Carolina coach Ron Rivera said Denver two years ago had a tough time and they bounced back. Do you take that to heart? I don't really see the point of asking that at that point. Uh, so I think I, that's a bad You could question. ask that in a different way. You could say, yeah. this happened to them. Do you think this might happen to you rather than do you take it to heart? That's mm-hmm. a weird question. Can you put a finger on why Carolina didn't play the way it normally plays? That's, I think, a bad way to phrase the question. But again, uh, the questions in here that I do think were good questions aimed at Ken Newton, what, um, although they were repeated a number of times, so just getting to, getting him to try to admit you know, what Denver was doing as far as their scheme to stop Carolina. It was obvious. Um, as much as they would... Who cares? People have to get the quotes, all right? Because they asked the Denver players, what did you guys do to stop Cam Newton? They got to ask Cam Newton what they did to stop him. So those are understandable. But we got a couple questions in here. Let's look at this. Do we sometimes forget that defenses can still take apart the offenses in this game? Uh, again, that's I would not like that. That'd be embarrassing. How about this? That's stupid. Cam like who is like Cam Newton's not going to speak for the collective we? Like I don't in questions partic- like that are just like anything in particular that was memorable. Uh, How about this? Uh, are you disappointed? Yeah, man, what do you think? Obviously, he's disappointed. Why are you asking? He's like, you you and your team are obviously disappointed. It wasn't even a question. No, I, Yeah, I know you're disappointed, not just for yourself, but for your teammates. It's got to be real tough. That was... I it. mean, pl- you've Wait, got... You've got how, many, how, yes. many, how many weeks... That's not people, a question. That's a statement. How many, pe- how many weeks these people have to prepare in general what kind of things you're going to ask you after the game? And this is the crap they come up with. But... Let's get into the so bigger. Let's get agree. into the bigger. Uh, nice. Let's get into the bigger aspect of this. Okay, um, everyone from uh, I shouldn't say everyone, but you got guys from Stephen A. Smith to Deion Sanders echoing what I'm echoing after the game is that he should have handled this um, more responsibly. He should have been a better leader. He should have come out and handled this like a man. Uh, and everyone said he was a sore loser after this game. And now Zach, he won my argument for me because he admitted that he was a sore loser. And all I want you to admit what do you is, want that, to is admit? that there is a spectrum as far as people who handle loss very well and people who don't. And oh. Cam Newton did not handle it as Twitter. well as he should have. Yeah, he didn't. Okay, what did I say on Twitter? Well, that, yeah, he, he didn't handle at the podium. First of all, the way he handled like the questions and stuff, I don't have a problem with because the questions were bad. Yeah, his body language is pretty bad. I'm not. I'm not saying that his body language is good or anything. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying like yeah, like uh, walking off. Like he should have definitely done that. I'm just saying I understand where he was coming. Oh, from. in understanding, that's that's absolutely fine. But all I, all I want to say here get is that Cam, look, Cam Newton's a great player. He's a, he's a good person, better than most. But I think we we can all just we can all decide that you know Cam Newton. I think he has some room to grow as far as how mature he is. I'm not disagreeing with that. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hold on, let, let, we're gonna get off this Twitter again. I don't think I, I don't think if you pick another top tier quarterback in this league, I don't think they would have handled it that way. And I really can't like think. Of well, well, hold on. I can't I think of another. I don't think comparing the other QBs is good. I do because I think people... there's a standard of professionalism in this league, and that quarterbacks have a standard as being the leader of the team, and he didn't meet that standard. Yeah, I, I agree. He's not a kid care, anymore. He's 26 years old. I know, but I don't care. Like, okay, so you don't think it's an important aspect of a leader? Um, I think, I think as a leader. Uh, we would like to see him maybe handle it a little better, but I think that with all the overwhelming emotions and everything, I kind of understand what happened. And I can guarantee I don't think... no one on the Panthers is watching TV. Well, nobody... for like the two days after anyway. Also, well, the, the Panthers no, none of his players teammates are going to be paying attention. They to They all that. respect him as a leader anyway. Yeah, that's that, just that's, true. My, that's um, my point. So my point still is... not a good example except for the rest of your team. Uh, I don't. I don't care that much. But you also. Said, I don't think that they care either. Yeah, you also but I mean, said. I also don't know. Kyle, that he needs. This is. I had a problem with this. You've been tweeting a lot the past couple of days, so it's hard to find. Wow, he is digging you up right now, man. No, I've been tweeting a ton. You've been tweeting like every. What is going on? I don't know, man. All right, you said. You started by saying, Broncos two D line was too good, and I, I we kind of agreed. I don't even know where these tweets are. Here we go. You said, we shouldn't give him special treatment, but yes, I'd agree, no media should interview players. That was just, okay. He needs to set an example for a team. He doesn't yes, need to do I'm anything. one of those individuals who thinks the leader of a team should set an example, okay, in the way he handles a loss. Like, if, he, if imagine he went up there and he was, like, super vocal about, you know what, 
give them the credit, but we're going to get better. We're going to grow from this. We're going to do it. I think the whole rest of the team would respond to that. Okay? Dude, that's what everyone says. That's just vanilla. Like, if I don't think like, it is that superficial. Respond. I think it means something. No, I don't think it means anything. I'd rather see raw motion. I'm not saying that, like... And Cam Newton's always this guy, like, you know, for the kids, all this crap. He comes out today, he says, show me a, show me a good loser, I'll show you a loser. He's basically saying there is... There, he's basically saying anything you ever teach kids in youth sports about being a good sport, and all, it doesn't mean anything. Because you lose, you lose. How you handle it does not matter. You said even if you're a fan of Newton, you have to criticize him. I'm not. I don't. I'm not going to criticize him. I'm not going to judge him for being annoyed with annoying questions and being really, really upset about the loss. They got crushed. It's okay to be upset. Josh Norman, like I said, he went up on the freaking thing. He said, "I don't want to talk to you guys." Yeah. If he then what did if he, he do? stay there, he's going to say nothing. There and talk to no, he didn't. He, he answered the question in full. But the the answers don't give anything to the. He's just. They're just going to say, "Are you upset?" If he just sat there and was like, yes, I'm disappointed. No, well, he didn't say that. Nobody if you go look back at the interview, he gets into what, what Denver did. So We I all think, saw what Denver did. They rushed the corners like crazy and like, beat up on Orson Remmers. You're in the media profession, okay? It, 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 does help people, it, it does help people write articles. But besides that, it's setting an example for the team. And it's acting like a professional. I don't think you think there's any value in acting like a professional in like post-game. I really um, no, I think, I think it does I think not matter. Our definitions of acting like a professional are different. I think we go I also there think after hug. hearing RJ, I don't think that pl- I think that remember how they're just talking about how players like view themselves as like this group and like then reporters are just like this other yeah. group of like invading people. I think hearing that from Hunter like last week, um, like I'm I don't mean I don't know I just don't know if I can agree with what what I'm hearing from Kyle right now. I think Boom! I think though, especially with a guy like Cam Newton, we know Cam Newton, he is he is when he when he's doing good and when he's win when he's winning, he's dabbing, he's in your face and he loves all the media attention, okay? I think if you're yeah. gonna be that guy, you have to be you have to be humble enough and you have to take defeat like a man in the spot. I don't think he has to do anything. I think Fine, but people are still gonna view him as immature, okay? And then he's coming Fine, out. He like, doesn't care. He's like, oh, people don't describe me with the same characteristics as they do Brady and Manny. Always people don't that's use the same words. That's because he hasn't words. won Super Bowls yet. Or no. how about and Brady? Also, that's what I, I think, think. People have a stigma about uh, Cam Newton that he's a sore loser and that he's immature. And Fine, how? Bra- you know what? Brady you see at the end of that game when he Can was getting sacked when his team right had now? no chance. Sure. Let me tell you a story that that is relevant to this. Go this, ahead. This summer, I went to Fenway Park uh, when the Twins were playing the Red Sox, and with my dad, and I was wearing all my twin stuff. And so this guy's like, oh, are you guys from Minnesota? Like, are you big Minnesota fans? We were like, yeah. So then he was like, oh, like, so you guys like the Vikings too? We were like, yeah. We were like, okay, oh, uh, that's too bad because you can't win with a black quarterback. Someone said This guy's straight, this is like the first awful. thing that this guy said to me. Well, he's clearly. But like, do you guys think that this is like, no. still like, do you think that this is playing no. a part of this? Because I think the race thing we're saying is... about how he's. You mentioned the thing about he's how he's well. There were racist comments on Twitter and after this game. It's not surprising because they're racist people. Well, yeah, I'm not, world, but so. I'm not talking about Twitter. I'm talking about the like the mainstream like frame from like the lens from which this is being from like from which this is being covered or like examined or how uh, people are viewing it. I think the race thing was because that has been like a storyline in the NFL. yeah, and I think it was I think it was built up as a storyline too much. I think. Cam, people don't like Cam because he gets really yeah. happy when they score and like celebrates, and people would rather see Brady. People, fans would rather see their quarterback be like, "We're gonna keep working hard" and stuff like that, rather than like celebrate. Which rather than like I'm Brady loving celebrates. having fun with the game. No, I know, but like in the way Cam does, people don't really like that. I don't have a problem with it, but I want to talk about comparing to other QBs, and people are like, "Well, he, you know, yeah, he's no Tom Brady." Like Brady fought to the bitter end versus Denver. Cam like gave up, didn't go for the ball, and then like left the podium. Yeah, like the actions speak for something. Yeah, Bra- I'm not. I'm not. This, Brady is. They're different guys. Brady's a lot more mature. He's 38 years old. He's been there. He's done that. But he has a different demeanor. I just don't like the media. Like guys, like you said, Stephen A. I don't like them being like Cam. Like you need to grow up. Like yo, like lay off a little bit. No, I just, I just, I just want people to. I think we were, admit that he has some growth to do in that department. Right. I, think he does. I don't think we were as far off as we were on Twitter because sometimes the wording gets. Do when there's no, only in the heat of the so moment. many characters. Yeah. You said people say, why should Cam have to answer stupid questions? I say, why not every no, other player people were coming, I had a good response People were coming out with the perspective like, why should Cam have to answer these questions? And, and that, uh, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's amazing that he's emotional after this. Everyone's emotional. But the only thing is, Cam seems like the only one of these guys who can is just walking off. He's not even going to sit there. He's not going to answer these questions as everybody else was. And people were making the you know the fact on Twitter he shouldn't have to answer this. Well, of course he should have. He's the same as everyone else. I mean, he sat there for however long it was. How, yeah. how, how long are you are you obligated to Until people to are done. There? Or until, you know, your f- tells you that it's over. 
We'll edit that out. Editing, man. <laughs> no, but uh, another, thing, another thing, Cam Newton was just named the MVP of the league. Yes. The yeah. face of the NFL. Yeah. Yes. If no, you're the face of the fair. NFL, do you think that's a, a good way to portray yourself? Um, For the NFL, no. For him, he doesn't care what people... Yeah, again, I, I mean, think he doesn't care. No, okay, I, I don't think... People the NFL are entertainers. Okay, now I'm going to go against Zach, though. Let's hear it. Watch. Now I'm going to go against Zach. Good. He has to care how people No, I him. meant... The money is in the image. The Im- the advertisement, the money, the revenue, the sponsorships. His livelihood no, is no. in the image and how he's perceived. Well, his livelihood's fine in terms of money, no matter what. I know. Dude, but, but do you think LeBron James is like, oh, I have enough money, I'm just going to sit on my hands, not think about how I could make even more money, and have, like, generations of kids, five generations from me, be set totally for life? No, I just don't... I don't think Cam... I think like like any human being like to an extent cares what people think. So let yeah. me let me rephrase. I think that he doesn't care about all the chatter being like he's immature, yeah. he's that. I think he's like <clears throat> all right, those you guys are just trolls. Like, which I think is fine to focus on himself. Yeah. But anyway, uh, last Super Bowl thoughts: Eli Manning face in full display. Yeah. What was that about? That was weird. We should put an image of the face. And because the thought comes into everyone's mind is now Peyton's got two (laughs) Super Bowls and now he has nothing. No, that wasn't the face. Apparently he was doing math in his head and he was figuring out like, oh, Peyton's up 12. Should they go for two or not? And that was the face he made, which I think is almost worse because that means when he does math, he looks really dumb. Yeah, especially for a quarterback who's supposed to be managing a team. That was arguably an even worse explanation. I think that wraps up the Super Bowl. I think so. Apparently the broadcast was bad. What, the like, I was sense? reading a, f- a full-blown Sports Illustrated article, not even just the announcers, but, like, the production side. Like, apparently people could hear the producer counting down to the commercial break in the truck. <laughs> like, gar- a guy going, like, three, two, one, get ready for break, take, or something like that. Like, people could hear that on their Frank TVs. Shore. When does that ever happen in a regular broadcast? I never hear those mess up. Did you hear that on the TV? No, I mean, I was barely listening. <laughs> Dude, but this, was, like, this is a game, like, very early on for me, you just kind of settled, you're like, you know what? No one's gonna, no one's gonna do anything against this defense. Yeah, it's just not gonna happen. Agreed. They're it never was, gonna be threatened at this yeah. point. Once you get up a touchdown or so, it's. Not, I they're I, not gonna I, I did bet on the Panthers. I got it wrong, but but hold Dude, on. That, that anthem bet. Oh, that anthem bet went was over. So clutch. One second, two twenty one. But bet I got right. Uh, what was it? Uh, Devin Funchess. Total number of receptions compared to Demarius Thomas. Demarius is supposed to have the line was three and a half more catches. I bet Funches. They both had one. It was it was an easy bet, a little easy bet. Uh, so nice. That's that's about it. Super Bowl Fifty in the books. Uh, we're gonna move over to the next portion. Oh man. Maybe they'll clap or something like. Dun, so dun, we know dun, dun, dun. we're gonna edit like, or something. You know, like un- highly unquestionable or whatever. They do these little transitions. Like yeah, yeah. Nice um, we don't have that guy Poppy though, but we have yeah, someone better. Alex. It's Alex Smith. We're gonna reintroduce him because if wow. you just skip to this part. You might have I missed mean, it. I mean, you probably did. You probably they probably. <laughs> Let's be part. honest. Let's be honest. Alex Smith, <clears throat> com 2017. He's a junior. He is the play-by-play man on the Patriot League Network for women's basketball. He is the play-by-play man for women's field hockey on the There's Patriot League Network. There's only women's field hockey. Well, you didn't need to specify. I might start a men's league, Alex. Title nine. I Let's do. Get that I'm going. in. Count me in as a player men's, or a coach. Does Title league. nine also mean like men's? I think it, I think it is. I think it's or is equality. It just, I think it's I, equality. I don't know. No, it's just like you have to spend as much money on women's sports as you do on men's sports. Okay, yeah. So then that wouldn't. So then my team has no money then for my men's field hockey team. Um, yeah. What other what other things do you do? We talked about Terrier Nation. He does yeah, dabbles. I mean, yeah. Uh, he was in uh, Frank Shore's broadcast sports journalism class, but uh, Alex is oh, looking yeah. looking to be a broadcaster. Yeah, definitely. So I guess we'll start you off with this. How do you prepare? To broadcast your games. How do I prepare? Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Wow, now you guys are both looking at me. Jeez, no pressure or anything. So, <laughs> let me tell you, Zach. Um, so, game is usually at 2. I'll take you through the normal routine of the Saturday. Love it. I wake All up access. at 7 a.m. Um, I usually try to go to bed early, but you know that that usually does yeah, not does happen. Um, so, I, I drink some water, hop in the shower, get out. I start making the, uh, the pregame notes, and I'm also... At this time, usually around like eight or eight thirty, um, Cavalry emails me like the cold open and like uh, ask me to input my info in it, and then I like rewrite half of it because like his is very barren and it's usually the same template over and over again. Um, so like I change it up or whatever, send it back, um, finish up my two note sheets. Either that or I make whoever's doing color do one of them. Um, get to there by eleven thirty. What do you have for breakfast? Um, usually West Dining Hall. 
Okay. Or I have D'Anthony sometimes because the women's team also has D'Anthony's. Like, oh, so you go there with them sometimes? Uh, I don't go there like with them, but like I the usually stories. see them and I'm like, sup? Yeah, no, sometimes That'd I talk to them. That'd be a story. Sarah Hope then, got an omelet. Uh, what's her name? Kara Sheftick got pancakes. Could change the dynamic could. of the game. I mean, it could change, or more importantly, the way that the game is broadcasted. That is what uh, we're then, um, I mean, I practice the open like a hundred times uh, before I do it, usually. Dedication. Um, yeah, no, not. I usually grab like a pen or something and hold it like this and like go into the bathroom mirror or something. And uh, Ever use a water bottle or like a Powerade bottle? Uh, I, I mean, I guess I should. I guess I should change it up. Um, then, uh, beforehand, I lately I've been annoying the uh, the camera person, you know, the one who sits right next to uh, where you'd go. Akiva? Um, no, it, I mean, it rotates oh. who the person is, but <laughs> oh, yeah, when I don't guy. have a partner and I'm sitting Good there and guy. it's like 20 minutes before the game, so much nervous energy. I have yeah. so much, and I like really? need to talk to the person or like yeah. if I have a color person, that's who I'm talking to, obviously, but just like starting to say stuff. Well, uh, not, the players nowadays, always the laugh at me. The, the players always laugh at me because like five minutes before the game, I'm like standing on the court and I'm like, Peyton Hawk drives to the basket, lays it up with the right hand. Like I'm warming up. To like narrating their warm up, and they think that it's hilarious. But so you're. I think it's up. just like me getting ready for the broadcast. That's well, nowadays, Alex, you got to be on edge because you don't know when you're gonna be in the national spotlight. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> segue on fleek right here. Mm. BU Sports have been I- extremely, you know, advertised in the last couple of weeks. Yep. Last Sports week, top ten. Alex got his <laughs> call of Sarah Hope's game winning. Was it a layup or like a uh, pseudo layup? It was like, it was like a fadeaway, fade, like fadeaway kind of, layup. Like or, yeah, fadeaway off the glass. Fadeaway off the glass. Uh, so it was Alex got his call uh, of Sarah Hope's game-winning shot on Sports Center, number one on the Sports Center top ten. Why did 10. you go like this when you said number one? I don't know why I did that. That was terrible. Number well, one guys. <laughs> on the Sports Center top ten. Tipping at the basket or something. So it'll be Melton. Thinks about a couple okay. of options. Finds Hope and Hope puts it up and in. Sarah Hope. Just put it up and in! Sarah Hope has won the game for the Boston University Terriers. 51 to 49. I cannot believe that I just saw that Matt Doherty. Him along with freshman Matt Doherty. Yeah. Who maybe we'll have on the program later. Maybe it, no, that, name got oh, cut man. off in the How about that though? That was, <laughs> it was that kid's first broadcast. That That's kid, nuts. yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, obviously Matt Doherty. I mean, I definitely. <laughs> Wait, but, but you also won NCAA Call of the Week. We oh. did. Yes, that was both of us. That was both. Of you. Um, he no Leo actually the uh, the marketing and uh, productions uh, guy at BU Athletics <laughs> that we work very closely with. Um, after the game, he separated the sound file, uh, put it up on SoundCloud like minute and thirty seconds. Probably cut it cuts in like thirty seconds before the inbounds. Um, lets it run and lets um. Let's Matt Doherty say his thing too. So then some good NCA.com said both of our names on it. It was nice. like, not gonna lie, it was incredibly validating after spending so much time with this team who are 2 and 19. It does get tough. And I travel on the Didn't road with that. them to places like Pennsylvania that take five hours to get to. So after all this work, <clears throat> it was very nice um, for a lot of people to like see that and a lot of people to a lot of people have been talking to me about it which makes me feel really good without and, me even bringing it up and how course. about um as you said you travel with the team yeah oh crap i lost my train of thought i don't remember mm. what i was going to say well i'll ask you this how'd you like seeing it on sports center you saw it in the dining hall i believe so i was i staked out i was supposed to i think we were supposed to go out it was a thursday night okay we were supposed to go out and you were like come on bro and i was like <laughs> dude i have to stay in and watch sports center to see if my <laughs> calls on sports center like obviously and then so i'm watching the 11 eastern sports center the first one and it's not even in the top 10 and i'm like crushed so i i like i to totally bed. thought it got I lost snowed. my mind no i totally thought it got some too so yeah. i went to bed and i woke up at like seven the next morning and i had a bunch of texts on my phone that said Dude, it was the number one play. And I was like, they must put it on the number one play like at 1 Eastern. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, got to see it in the morning. So I saw it in the morning and I just saw <clears throat> that it was on the top 10. And of course, just like every single other top 10, um, all it was was like the two anchors talking about it. And like you could faintly hear my call in the background, but the only reason you could hear it was because I was like, Screaming. Your call was so much better than you know what they had. Honestly, it was one I of those mean, things where they got. I go thought in. that they have you guys seen the clip of the sports center guys talking about it? They're like making jokes about like yelling about Sarah Hope. They might like literally be like oh, making yeah, fun of my yeah, call. Like, were, like, really? um, like, I thought smoke. like I can't like know what their intent was, but I felt like was I mean not like else? making fun of, but like being like oh they would be like, oh they Sarah were, Hope. Oh. They were here. like yeah exactly or like maybe they thought it was funny. I don't know. Wait, who were the anchors? I can't remember. I don't remember who it was either. 
But then later in the dining hall is when I heard them actually use the call as like a little transition into a break. They use like 10 or 15 or 20 seconds of it. And that's awesome. I need to like somehow contact someone from ESPN to get the tape on that. I'll just text the guy I know who works at ESPN. Totally. You guys yeah. met at Bucci, right? right? Or you did? Oh, we did. Yeah, I we did. That was on my birthday. That was. Unbelievable. 21st. Crazy. So you mentioned you travel with the team. Mm-hmm. What tips? Will you get? Would you give young broadcasters for traveling on the road? How do you survive? Do you eat a lot of McDonald's? Uh, well, no, we don't eat a lot of McDonald's because uh, <clears throat> we, I like, I'm on the team bus, so I'm eating what they eat. And what do they eat? Uh, like they usually go to like Italian restaurants, stuff like that, like carbo loading, like up before the game or whatever. It's high class. Um, <clears throat> sandwiches on the way out, um, on the bus, hotel breakfast, um, lots of carbs, Fancy. stuff like that. Um, but as far as traveling, um, I know once I got on the bus, the first thing I did, I was like, where should I sit? Because I've been on a basketball team once and I know that there's like there's a, a place where there. everyone sits. There's a hierarchy. So I didn't want to like bust up where anyone sits. So I got my spot. I uh, kind of kept to myself. Eventually I interviewed some of the players, uh, to get like some stuff to throw to before, during breaks, stuff like that. And they, they were into it. Um, a lot of people like being featured. A lot of, like, college-level athletes, they like, um, especially for, like, a women's sport especially. Uh, although, I will say, even last night, I have seen a lot of women's college basketball on ESPN. Um, I was going to ask you how you felt about that, but we can get into that later. Um, other than that, though, just be respectful of everyone. Um, they are people, and the trips are long and difficult, but um, try to stay positive. How do, and you do it alone, right? Because you don't broadcast on the Yeah, yeah, party. correct. Well, because I kind of, like, made my schedule so that I could do this because mm-hmm. I knew they wanted me to do this. Um, so, so yeah, I don't think – I mean, if someone else in WTVU, like, had given availability, maybe they would travel with me, although the only other dude on the trip is Drew, the uh, uh, the trainer, So and we room together. And, oh, like, so him. I don't know if – like, there would be another room checked out for dudes. Well, you, do you I don't even know if it would be possible for me to bring another person. You guys have bunk beds? No. I, I mean, it's a hotel. Can't do podcast on the road? <laughs> well, you could. Kyle? Could with Coach. Any follow-ups? Uh, no. Uh, what do you want to say about women's basketball on ESPN? Women, I mean, it's been there <laughs> way more than before. Like, well, I don't know what I've seen recently. Double header. Than, other than there was a double header last night. The UConn, uh, South Carolina, which is a 1-2, yeah, so that was right. huge. But, that um, girl is actually really good. Oh, she, I forgot what her amazing. name was, but uh, it was impressive. She's, I feel like she's like a sophomore, too. But, I actually, um, you know what is crazy? I know I got into field hockey, but I was literally watching women's basketball yesterday instead of the bean pot. I was watching that number one versus game. number two women's basketball matchup. Instead of the bean pot. That's that's a big statement. What else? Oh, wow. I'm making it because I was watching Texas, what Oklahoma, college basketball. That was a good. What game. was it? Texas, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, dude. Buddy healed with that last second. Oh, that was, oh he's going to win player of the year for sure. He's amazing. Alex, what is your worst broadcast moment of all time? You know what? Uh, I recently uh, found my first broadcast. At BU. Wow. Yes. And it was a field hockey broadcast where I was doing color commentary with a play-by-play guy who was also not very good. And... It literally, no so names, he like, no, no obviously not. Um, <laughs> he is, he's like making the intro and then I like come in and I sound like I'm literally reading off of a piece Which of paper. Which you probably like, I probably was. And like, the thing is, I barely even knew the rules of field hockey <laughs> at the time. And this is like my like third week of college. I was just trying to get on the air as soon as I possibly could. Like when I got to campus. So. Have you ever said anything really stupid on a broadcast? And if so, what was it? Uh, definitely not. I have not said anything like offensive because <laughs> otherwise, like I wouldn't have been here anymore. But um, the the BUTV ten production team likes to make fun of me because I always like make remarks about players from Minnesota. Like I yeah. always and I always like spend like way too long talking about them or like talk about what they did in their high school career or like something like that. Um, and like I maybe I think it's funny in my head, but no one else knows that I'm from Minnesota, so like no one cares. I got another question. And they what, make fun of me. what was it like to block Tyus Jones in high school? Uh, That's a really good question. First of all, that, I deny that thanks. that happened. Wait, that didn't happen? <laughs> I definitely told Kyle this exact story too. <laughs> Wait, what? I was like, no, because Kyle you thought that with I. Him, yes, I did. Right. So I played against Tyus He's Jones. He's short, I can imagine. Uh, in, it was a preseason scrimmage because my team was 3A and his team was 4A. He's like a class, high, he's in the highest class. Um, and like we're in the second highest. So they have a 6'10 guy on their team, first of all, which is insane to play against. Are in you 6'10? 
I wish. <laughs> um, give me five more inches. Um, but so, so yeah. So obviously it's a pregame scrimmage or preseason scrimmage. Tyus is not going to play that much. You're not going to miss like this future NBA prodigy's like health on a preseason scrimmage. So he's only playing for like the first three minutes of the game. But luckily, even though I didn't even start a lot of the time, I was like in the starting lineup for that scrimmage. I was out there the whole time that he was out there. First time down defensively, for some reason, we did have a very tall team, so I could see where the mix-ups would happen. But he was guarding me. I was not guarding him on the other side. We obviously knew who Tyus was and that there's no way that I should guard Tyus Jones. Um, but he's guarding me and, like, we're trying to set up the offense. I'm like, no, I'm screaming for the ball in the post. I'm like, give me the ball right now. I need to turn around. I need to put a hook shot over Tyus Jones because even though he's obviously – Numerous times as talented at basketball as me, I am inches taller than him and have a nice hook shot. So post run, yeah, I, I was gonna get one. in the post. They didn't pass it to me. Oh, next man. time down, that happens. Uh, six ten guy happens switches to on to me. Lot. Obviously, I'm not gonna do a, a hook shot with a six foot ten guy on me in high school basketball. So pretty much that that's it. He got subbed out. Didn't come back in. He was wearing uh, a Team USA armband, which was like. Was it Come sweet? on, kid. Like, you're a jerk. But, like, yeah, it was sweet. It was sweet. <laughs> it yeah. was sweet. Yeah. You could have just said that you blocked him. You didn't have to ruin it. I know, but, for like, I don't know. I don't want to, like. No, it's One okay. day, like, if I become, like, Bob Costas and someone, like, digs this up, then he'll be like, uh, that didn't happen. Yeah. Because maybe true. he'll be famous, too. You never know. But, These things can come but back if and you. If you become more famous than Tyus, he'll be like, oh, that guy totally blocked but see, my shot. I think that the odds of that are extremely low because even if Tyus, like, never achieves, like, national like stardom which there are is a very high chance that he won't in the state of minnesota also he's too, already so well known and so like known even people a lot of people don't know the names of commentators like a lot of people could easily recognize a commentator's voice but not know their name that's true that's and that's something that like here. i'm very aware of and like i don't care i would rather have people recognize my voice my name is alex smith anyway <laughs> like that's like the most like generic name ever Sorry. so like I, like, I don't care about that. Your mom, Zach, was my the mom. first person who ever Boom. recognized me by my voice. Oh, wow. I remember that. So, I didn't house. think, I didn't, I like, I listened, when I listened to that broadcast of the Sarah Hope shot, I was like, well, that's Alex. Like, it, but it I was like screaming really so, I was screaming. It sounded really good. I was like, I would listen to that for a whole game. It was good. <clears throat> Alex. That was a good game, too. That was the best game. That game was awesome. Was. And we watched that uh, at the end of you the got, class. That, oh, was, yeah. I got was. a great Snapchat. So my question for you, where do you see yourself after school going with broadcasting? Um, so Can't, killed the question. Yeah, you killed it. Um, <laughs> so this is the plan. I've spoken with um, with Professor Frank about this and received his directives. I want to be in baseball. So wow, out of nice. heard it here first. So out of uh, out of college, like you got to grind. You got to be like a major leaguer. What do major leaguers do? They go to the minor leagues. That's what Joe Wild uh, just so got to go, the job. I have to go to the minor leagues. Yeah. So that's what I want to do. So in order to do that, um, he was like, what you want to do is next year during the winter meetings, which is like early December in Nashville next year, oh. um, which he already knew because he told me. Not exactly. Bad barbecue. Exactly. Um, you have to go there. And not only are there like the managers making all the trades and all that stuff, there's also like the biggest job there that you've ever seen in your life. Like so many tables, every single like minor league team with like job openings, major league teams too. Um, and so you go there with like your resume, with your tapes um, and everything and um, give it to them. And he said, I mean, this is typical Frank banter, but um, I sort of believe him also um, that he's never sent someone there who hasn't come back with at least two offers. So do you go to the tables and they're like, I want to broadcast He said go you? with like 30 resumes. Wow. Yeah. Alex just literally just drops the Sarah Hope tape on the table and then people come to him number one, one. Number one. That's i wish i work. wish no but but here's what i was also thinking because i closely follow the the twins play by play guy on twitter he's like my personal what's his idol, name obviously uh cory provis just ask cory provis you watch him Provis. hopefully Woo! um but uh, he Smith does 55. he works on the big 10 network uh, oh wow doing basketball so they have during, multiple jobs exactly if you're doing radio baseball winter's open what are you gonna do college basketball like obviously if you're doing the pro sports the pro sports cycle doesn't work like that. Like you are, if you're doing a pro sports, um, well, I mean, I guess you could go baseball and then uh, college basketball, but you couldn't cover the NBA and MLB, for example, because they run too much during the same time. So I guess, yeah, there you go. Minor league baseball. So he told me to get this Cape Cod internship this summer. So, and you got it. 
Yeah. So you'll be doing some video there. I'm pumped to do video because I also need to know how to edit video so I can make said tape of myself. But you can edit this video. It'll be your first task. It's oh, true. Oh, God. Look I have, to, professional I have to bleep out that thing that Kyle said. What did he say again? What's it? What? Beep! <laughs> Some word that started with F. Uh, um, so I got my last question. Uh, what do you see for the future of WTBU Sports? We are co-directors. I'm graduating in yeah. May. So, Alex, next year you'll be the senior in charge. What do you see for the future of the station? Uh, that's that's my question. I mean, I think that by moving into the kind of like more online heavy realm, since we lost a radio slot anyway, if we're moving towards podcasts, that can be a good thing for us. Uh, in terms of in terms of not talking about game calling, because I kind of like oh, our do you like the radio great. and then yeah. like goal, game calling is like a separate. But it's just a way to diversify entity. the station. Yeah, no, exactly. More talent, get more people, more yeah. exposure. Um, athletics wanted me to uh, try to uh, initiate like more females on women's sports broadcasts. And I was like, obviously, just like, oh, we, we just didn't have the people. So um, I know some girls from classes, uh, recruited some the other day at the, the general interest meeting. That's kind of, I mean, that's like vague. If it happens, it happens. I'm not, um, I'm not trying to force it. They're not trying to force it on me either, but they were just like, hey, if you can do this, then that's great. So um, that's something. Um, in terms of calling the games, I mean, Patriot League Network is like a huge spot for any of our guys. And I know Athletics wants to formalize it um, and get us potentially even more involved in it. So hopefully we can continue. Talking about getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you talk, you want to pay me to like watch a game like in fronter than the front row and like and you do narrate of, what's happening? Well, you do a lot of work. Are you kidding me? I mean, yeah, but like it doesn't. You know how I know that, like, this is what I want to do is when it's game day and, like, I can barely sleep the night before and, like, the team is, like, 1-19. That's and it. And I know that they're going to lose and I might be traveling and it might be by myself. Oh. But, like, I lost the first two weekends back at school to travel with the team to Pennsylvania both times. One time during that blizzard, too. And, you, and you're happy with it. You're not, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And, like... Alex, They're not paying me right now, and like that's how I know. Alex has no direction in life. He doesn't know what he wants to do. He's so confused. Kyle, I'm uh, everything else is like everything else. Everything is. else is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Especially that uh, that beanie with the uh, what is that called again? Short sleeve. I don't even know. No what? Sleeve. Oh, dude, Sleeveless. yeah. Oh, dude, <laughs> you don't want to see the hat hair right now. I just came here out of the shower. I did not know I was going to be on video. Kyle, so. last questions for Alex. Oh. I don't know. Uh, do we have any more time left? Because I was going to talk about just a couple things. Yeah, well, Carl Anthony. A couple news things, not Carl Anthony. No. Oh, yeah. He is good, though. Whatever you want to talk about, we could do, because I have, like, a final thing, but I want that to be the final all thing. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so. Word. Let's see. Um, in recent news, LaShawn McCoy uh, is very close to being arrested. A uh, uh, warrant has been issued for his arrest um, for a scuffle involving off-duty police officers in a Philadelphia nightclub. So that's not looking good for uh, for LaShawn McCoy Yikes. at all. Did you see the video? I did see the video. It's almost as bad as Jaleel's <laughs> from oh, earlier in the season, but it's it, pretty bad. I felt like it was hard to see who was who in that video. Yeah, they used some arrows on TMZ to help you out with that. Yeah, but oh, it thank was... God for TMZ, dude. I know, right? <laughs> TMZ, dude. I wonder how much you know they pay for some the prospect of you know whoever Tons has that whoever has video. that footage. Yeah, just go no, because they don't just have camera people out everywhere. Right. They just but the like, world is there. The, the it, world is their staff, dude, and that's just so amazing about it. The world is their staff. Yo, I was listening to. Um, our podcast that we recorded just now. The Shore Report. And 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 Taylor was there, and she called you out. Oh, what did she, she say? She said, how, like, I don't even remember, but she but she was like, how can Zach, like, you, you were just contradicting yourself. and she I contradicted you. myself? You did. What did she say? You know, when I started this, when I started saying this, you I totally you knew gonna, what it was, but yeah. now I'm totally not remembering it, but I'm definitely going to bring it up later. Well, I would. You definitely need to hear it. I would love to. I remember having just, like, one of those. I would like, love to oh respond gosh, to her. Right. I would love to respond to her take because I felt pretty good about what I said. So that I did be, too. Yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have to see about that. And this podcast too. This you, know, podcast. You, guys, you guys do good work. Thank you. Yeah, I, this is I had fun. This was good. It was good. It was very fun. Uh, next week we're gonna have we'll be joined by Jordan Tebow, who was supposed to be our oh, guest yeah. today. But Alex filled in. Ask him about online journalism class. Are you in that class? Yeah, dude, it's an awesome class. Jordan, I mean, not the class, but we make it. Jordan Tebow is also a junior in Com, a New England native, 
and a WTBU hockey guy, so we'll have him next week with me and Kyle. Before we send off, Alex, can you do the impression of the call? I saw that. He saw it on my computer. computer. Can you do the do call? Um, Sarah Hope, I'll be, you'll be that Troy Mountain throwing You pass. have to, like, put what? in the Throw clip of it before. Uh, you have to put in the clip before or after so that you can see. Yeah, we'll do that. What the, okay. We'll, we'll see how, how close you could do it. Do you need so I was to... talking, one of my favorite parts about the call was in the call of the week part when I was talking about how the Terriers should sub in Mila Ekstrom. Oh, I remember to that. To get the tip yeah. in. That was smart. Because she's six foot five. She never played. It's good they didn't take but, the advice. So then after that, <laughs> um, what happens? Um, I think... Your, for your best memory. I think um, Doherty says something, and then I say, like, it's Melton. She's looked at a couple options. The top! Oh, my God! Sarah Hope! Sarah Hope has won the game! And then... For the boys of University think, Terms! Yeah, no. And then forgot the main part. And I'm... Okay, no, no. But <laughs> I want to get into this part. I'm, like, pretty sure... That I like also was like standing up and going like, oh my god, like I cannot, like on my hands were just like in the air and like I heard when I was leaving, um, I cannot believe like one of the one of the players, like one of the other players was like, oh my god, like did you see that guy? <laughs> and I was like, oh my. Well, god. Well, you forgot, you forgot this. She puts it up and in. Oh yeah, the puts it Sarah up. Sarah yeah. Hope puts it up and in. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean Matt I thought... Doherty. <laughs> Matt Doherty. Did okay. you see that Matt I was, Doherty? I was afraid that people wouldn't understand the context of the Matt Doherty thing because <laughs> I've been calling him Matt Doherty all game because it was the first time that we did a game together. So like, I do not believe what I just saw. No, I think I even flipped around the wording. Um, I cannot believe that I just saw that, okay. yeah, which yeah. was like a uh, like an unintentional like spin on a classic. Um, yes, but honestly, like I thought that I would know like what to say or like be prepared for a moment like that, but that was completely pretty... wasn't. It was and all, all the energy, like I said, all the two and nineteen, like all the like just grinding and like no like feeling like it was a waste of time sometimes, and like all that just like came out in one moment. Well, that's awesome. Good yeah. having you on, buddy. It was a good talk. Uh, that's Anthony. it for the Zach and Kyle podcast. Yes. See you next week. See you.